Hey guys, what's going on? This is Jeff. Today we're going to make a video to talk about the coral um, die-off in Hawaii. So, it, for those of you who are in the dive community or like to snorkel and check out, you know, what's going on underwater, um, you might be interested in coming to Hawaii, in particular the Big Island, which is where the best snorkeling is. The water's still clear, but the vibrance in the color underneath the water is not as abundant as it once was. So there's obviously the, the, the community that wants to put the onus on um, humans. So there's a couple different uh, complaints that are out there about man-made or the, basically man's effect on why the coral is dying off. So one, the most common one uh, that's causing the coral bleaching or the coral die off is from um, rising ocean temperatures which people associate with uh, man-made global warming. Without all the politics involved, <clears throat> the science behind it says that because the ocean temperatures have risen, the that has caused the coral die off. So because because the ocean temperatures are warmer, the coral is now dying. So uh, just to give you a little bit of information on what it says on NOAA, NOAA's website, last fall warmer than average ocean temperatures resulted in a serious coral bleaching event in Hawaii. Marine resource managers and scientists immediately took to the water to monitor and document the effects of this phenomenon on local coral reef communities. What they've seen is that over time, many of the bleached corals they monitored are showing signs of recovery. Okay. Ann Rolinski, a marine resource specialist at the Hawaii Division of Aquatic Resources, one of the state's first responders, her job was to organize the division's initial assessment of the event, coordinate with partners, and ensure that the public received the latest information on the bleaching and she says, please tell everyone about the coral bleaching that has occurred in 2014. Uh, that experienced uh, In October 2014, Hawaii experienced a huge spike in ocean temperatures and a period of very low winds. Our divers were log logging in water temperatures 86 degrees Fahrenheit during this time. This was dangerously warm for coral and we started to see a dramatic coral bleaching across the state. Okay, so... This, they say it also happened from Kauai to the Big Island. So, as someone who snorkels, you know, I don't necessarily scuba dive, but I definitely get in there. I mean, if I look at YouTube videos or videos from before I came to the islands in 2014, I, I see like videos from 2012 where there's these big, you know, coral that are on the reefs. Now if I go diving, I don't see these coral that were in these videos. I mean, it used to be a very colorful looking scene um, prior to 2014 and some of these videos you'll see if you just Google it. Now if you go underwater in those same areas, you, you can't, I mean, I'm not a coral expert, but you don't see the, the big, you know, coral structures like you would see coral that you've, you know, seen in movies and whatnot or in uh, Discovery Channel or Nat Geo documentaries. Now, the, the second thing that people also blame for coral is people using a certain type of sunscreen. So, the sunscreen that, you're, that doesn't kill the reefs, so this is, the sunscreen uh, industry has come under heat for this and tourists also are being blamed for it because they wear those spray-on lotions or spray-on uh, sunscreen. The spray-on sunscreen has a ingredient in there that is not uh, friendly to the reefs. Sunscreen ingredient harmful to coral is what I'm typing into Google just to give you that information. Uh, it, it's the the ingredient that they're saying is not friendly to coral is called oxybenzone. So. It's most commonly used in spray on anything you use to spray on. So the safe stuff is the stuff that's a lotion. If you're coming here and you want to swim, but you don't want to have the responsibility of being, you know, 
or be responsible for potentially killing off coral reefs or affecting the ecosystem. Now, the third, the third line item that I would say is not being talked about that could potentially be talked about that, as you know, I've made a video about this in the past, is the radiation from Fukushima Daiichi. That's the, that's the power plant that's over in Japan. Now, if you go online, there's science, this, there's a portion of the scientific community <clears throat> that says that you know there's a there's a big problem with um, radiation in our oceans and fish are actually having high levels of radiation still here in 2017 coming into 2018 from the 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 disaster that happened back I think it was 2010 or 2011 I apologize if I don't know the exact date at this particular moment. But that, that particular, um, those reactors are still leaking um, radiation into the ocean because there's a, a few, uh, I forget what it's called, one of the centrifuges is leaking and that the excess fluid that comes from that is what's causing the radiation in the ocean. Now I'm not a nuclear fusion scientist, I don't know if it's, I don't even know if it's uranium or plutonium or what the, the nuclear component is, but I do know that they've said that there's a portion of the community that says that radiation levels in the Pacific Ocean are very high and they're affecting the ecosystem. So I would say that what the mainstream tells us is causing the coral bleaching and it being in line with the timeline for the the Fukushima radiation, I would say that it's possible that that's what's also causing it. Now, I I would say that warm ocean waters also would make sense, the sunscreen thing. So between the three, we don't know exactly what's causing it, but one thing's for sure, like here in Maui, if you just go down to any of these beaches, you'll see the, the beach has a bunch of just dead coral just up on the beach. Now, if to the to the first time visitor, you might just assume that, oh, there's dead coral right there. That's pretty cool. I, I would assume this happens all the time. But after I started going down there, I was like, man, there's just a big pile of dead coral right here. And I haven't asked a local directly who's been coming to these beaches for, you know, 30 years or something to say, hey, 10 years ago, would, would dead coral have just washed up on the beach like this? Um, to, to know if that's an abnormal, abnormal um, circumstance. So I say it was cool because, you know, as a, as a person, you know, looking for seashells and um, cool things on the beach, you might assume that, hey, wow, look at this little piece of coral that I found. That's pretty cool because, you know, if you go to Florida, obviously they got Shell Beach and it's not normally a big deal, but Knowing what's happened here in Hawaii with the coral die-off, it now it's it doesn't have the same kind of uh, out. I don't have the same outlook that I had before, and I am concerned about the coral, the coral reefs, because you know obviously coral is a very beautiful thing to see underwater, and the fact that it's not as <clears throat> abundant as it once was, and is in other places still. It, it makes me, you know, concerned and want want to make sure that these places that still do have coral are thriving. One of the things, I don't know if you know this, but one of the reasons why coral grows here is because this is considered a pelagic desert. What a pelagic desert is, is it, it, what makes it a pelagic desert that has coral is because the water's so clear. So that's how the photosynthesis from the sun the, the UV rays from the sun is able, able to reach the ocean floor, which is able to grow it. Whereas up north, uh, in like Alaska, California, you know, you have these, uh, these uh, tall seaweeds, which you don't have here. But in the water over there is a higher level of plankton and other sort of uh, things in the water that block the sunlight from coming all the way through. Obviously up in Alaska, they probably don't get as much sunlight in the winter time. But here, here we have, here, here the coral grows because it's, 
it's a pelagic desert in the sense that there's not a lot of debris in the water or plankton or other uh, you know microorganisms that are in the water blocking the sun from reaching the ocean floor that's why the coral grows in the tropics mostly so that's that's just, I just wanted to make this video to kind of clear the air on some of that, give you guys some insight as to what the coral situation looks like for you dive or snorkel and why you wouldn't be seeing as much uh, underwater flora and fauna as you would previously. There's still, there's still a lot of stuff in the water that you can see, but it's not quite the abundance that it once was. So. You know, obviously you can't control Fukushima. You can't control the ocean temperatures. Out, you know, as an individual, you might be able to play a little bit of a role in that. But you can not wear the spray-on sunscreen here in Hawaii. But to go one step further, they are going to the state of Hawaii is looking to ban that particular substance that's in the sun, sunscreen. So, anyways, guys, thanks for watching and. Feel free to ask me any questions, subscribe to the channel if you um, like videos like this. But um, yeah, ask me questions about Hawaii or any place I travel around, so see you guys later.